In response to rant number 19, I had one YouTuber post a question that I get all the time. A request. Oh yeah? Define evolution. Well, I'm so glad you asked, because frankly, the evolutionists have made the definition of evolution as clear as mud. And I can't help but think it's deliberate. For example, some will say that evolution is defined as change over time. Oh, come on. That definition is so vague and pathetic, it starts to sound like a politician's campaign promise. For example, here we have the evolution of the bicycle. It depicts change over time. So is this evolution? No, that's intelligent design. This one-size-fits-all definition of evolution muddies the waters. If evolution really is change over time, then that would include things like the continuous, measurable deterioration of our DNA. Isn't that evolution? After all, it's change over time. No, that's de-evolution. Your definition muddies the waters because it includes everything. We're even led to believe that things like mass extinctions are quote-unquote evolution. <laughs> Wait a minute. Mass extinctions don't help evolution one iota. Mass extinctions are a removal of genetic variation and a removal of species from the gene pool. It's the opposite of evolution. I have even had some people try and tell me that language is changing over time is evidence of biological evolution. That's right. See, things like the Inuit language did not have words for things like car, microchip, airplane, etc. Those words were then added to the language. The language changed over time. It evolved. Isn't that proof of biological evolution? No, that's intelligent design. What on earth does adding words to a language have to do with a lizard evolving a wing? That's just muddying the waters. And you'll please notice it's not the creationists who are muddying the waters. Originally, some evolutionists, apparently in an attempt to make evolution sound more convincing, would point to changes in variation within dogs as an example. They would point to these changes over time within the dogs and call it microevolution. A lizard evolving a wing, for example, would be considered macroevolution. So is microevolution evidence of macroevolution? No, that's variation within the species. They are all dogs. What does this have to do with a frog turning into a prince, such as evolutionary theory would have you to believe? I had one evolutionist write to me, rejecting the idea of microevolution. He said, what? That's like asking me if I believe in microgravity or macrogravity. Even creationists believe in variation of the species, so effectively what you're attempting to do with this vague definition of evolution is by even including creation as evidence of evolution. Microevolution is just another term to make evolution sound more convincing. It's just muddying up the waters. So what am I talking about when I refer to evolution? Well, it would be what most evolutionists call macroevolution. The idea that a frog turned into princes and university professors. A lizard grew a wing. Amoebas over millions and millions of years gave rise to more and more sophisticated and complex organisms. It's the idea that life somehow magically arose from non-life via unguided natural processes. It's the onwards, upwards, gradual progression, not a loss or degeneration. It's the gain of new genetic information over time. Instead, what we see is stasis and extinction in the fossil record. We see the loss of genetic information over time. We find scientific and natural laws that say it's impossible for life to arise from non-life. The onus for defining evolution really should be upon the evolutionists, not myself. Nevertheless, I hope that this rant helped clarify what I think evolution is, or, more importantly, what evolution is not. Now let me be clear. The evidence is clear that there is a Creator God. I would say He was none other than the Lord Jesus Christ, who came and died to provide a clear path for you to get into the new heaven and the new earth. The problem is, your sins are dirtier than the dirtiest of dirt, and so are mine. But Jesus Christ provided a way to clear the way, and to clean you of all your sins. All you have to do is call upon Him today and ask Him to forgive you of your sins and to cleanse you of your sins. Why don't you call on Him today?